Hi guys, my name is Chris Ord, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to take you behind the scenes on a photo shoot where we use both high speed sync and colour gels. High speed sync is a fantastic tool to use, particularly in portraiture. It's often misunderstood and people think it's this really complicated and extensive thing that really difficult to do, but in fact, it's one of the easiest techniques to use with off-camera flash. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some techniques I've used to create these beautiful shadow aperture portraits while still using strobe lighting. Now, I'm not gonna go into the full technical side of high-speed sync shooting. There'll be loads of videos that cover that sort of stuff. And to be honest, my mind doesn't work in a technical way. I'm very straightforward thinking and very simply thinking when I'm shooting with high-speed sync. So in essence, what high-speed sync does, it allows you to use strobes, but a really shallow apertures, which is compensated with a super fast shutter speed. Now, the reason I'm using high speed sync today, and to be honest, the reason I use it most of the time is because I tend to shoot with wide open apertures. So shooting a 1.4, 1.8, F2, it allows me to isolate my subject from the background and create something of a dreamy feel to my images rather than having everything pin sharp. Now, in the first set I'm showing you now, we shot in a pub in Newcastle near the Quayside. So this is a pub I've known for a long time. I was actually thrown out of it about 10 years ago, but I think the manager forgot. Now I wanted to get a really dark moody feel to this image with our model Nathan and I used two key lights for this setup. Now the first as you can see in frame was a Lencard and 95 centimeter octobox which was placed about two feet away from Nathan's right hand side. Now what you'll also see me doing here is adding a gel into my strobe. Leaf fillers were kind enough to send me a pro pack of their colored gels which I wanted to use on this shoot. And the second light I used was a globe which was put at height and shot at a low power as a subtle fill light. So I attached a CTO gel, that's color temperature orange, to my main light. Now the reason I did this was to allow me to turn my white balance in camera to tungsten, which turned the rest of my scene to a blue hue. And that CTO gel brought back the neutral tones in the skin. Now because I had one light gelled and one light ungelled, the ungelled light became blue and cool, which is a sort of feel I want, which gave me this beautiful contrast in the frame where we had orange light coming from Nathan's left hand side and that blue hue coming from the right hand side. And then for the second frame in this set I changed angle very slightly and I got a lot closer to Nathan changing the angle of his face to angle away slightly from my key light. Now what this did was create shadow and definition under the jawline and it helped us to create a shot with much more contrast creating definition around the cheekbones under the jawline. Now for the second set in this series, we travelled a little way further into Newcastle to the High Level Bridge. Now if you know Newcastle, you'll know this bridge and I've lived in Newcastle my entire life and this is the first time I've ever shot on this bridge. So when I scouted this location the day before, it was a beautiful bright sunny day and it was meant to be the same for this shoot. But as you can see from the footage, it was very overcast, very misty and very flat light. Now I decided I wanted to use that beautiful sunny light from the day before, so now I had to create my own light. So in this first set, as you can see, we set up again with the 95 centimeter octobox from Lencard and we had that CTO gel in there from Leaf Filters. Again, we turned our white balance in camera to tungsten, which turned that whole scene blue and gave us a really cool ethereal feel to the image. I had a second light, which was set way back out of scene, which was an AD600 with a long reflector, which is unmodified essentially, and it helps create a much harder light. Now the feeling I wanted with that light was to create the sun coming through. Because the sun wasn't there as it was the day before, I needed to add this light to give me some drama. Now again in this instance, because that light didn't have a gel on it, it turned into a really cool blue which gave us that beautiful balance again between that orange and blue light. After that initial set, we moved across to the side of the bridge where the sun was starting to break through the clouds just a little bit to give us that extra help. So I only had to use one light in this frame. I ditched the long reflect and kept my 95 centimeter octobox. Now I set this within about two or three feet of Nathan, angled slightly down from about a foot above his head height, which helped to create those shadows under the jawline you'll see in the finished image. Now again, this was still gelled, and because I'm shooting against that blue light which is coming from the sky, give us again that beautiful contrast in the color. Now I was shooting relatively wide open at 1.8, and to combat that, I needed a shutter speed of 1600th of a second to allow us to get the right level of ambient light. We moved around this set a little bit, looking for the best of the architecture and these beautiful arches that go on almost mirrored arch feel 
give that beautiful setting, especially with that shallow aperture, which just allows that architecture to fade off into the background. And with our third set, we did get wrong for filming here, which is why we don't have a great deal of footage here. We used a two light setup. Again, the 95 centimeter Octobox was our key light, but in this frames, you'll see me putting on the steps, we used the bare AD200. Now this AD200, because unmodified, would spread the light out essentially in every direction it can see. Now what I wanted to create with this is a beautiful rim light behind Nathan. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of frames where I catch it just wrong and I get the flash straight into the camera. So trying to hide it behind Nathan to make sure we got the sort of shot we were after was really important. Now again, that balance between the aperture and the shutter speed are really important in this instance. Shooting a 1.8 at 4,000th of a second allowed us to bring that ambient down enough so we were in total control of the light. Now the gels were a last minute element to this shoot. Lee Fillers had got in touch with me a few days before saying they would send me some product to use. And luckily it arrived the night before the shoot. Now my next video will be going a lot more in depth with gels in the studio, showing you some of the fantastic techniques you can use to create some stunning images in the studio space. Space. Guys, if you've liked what you've seen today, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment and obviously a thumbs up too. If you do have any questions on using high speed sync, drop me a comment below and I'll try my best to answer as many as I possibly can. And as I say, I will be doing a more in-depth video on colour gels very soon. Thanks very much for watching.